Hey hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we'll be making our very own Mac template which can be used for any bipedal Macs. What's amazing about this template is that you can only have to make it once, then you can customize the animations to fit the Mac you're making. It's great because you can reuse the template for as long as you want. Okay now, quick disclaimer, you don't have to completely follow everything I do in this video. This is just what works best for me and I am only sharing the methods I use to create my Macs. So first of all, what you want to do is make some sort of frame. It doesn't have to look good, just make it look simple, just like this. Now if you already made a Mac beforehand, I suggest adjusting the frame's proportions to have similar proportions to your pre-made Mac. A Mac frame with long arms won't properly work with a Mac with shorter arms. Okay, for example, here's my Mac frame. Now as you can see here, I've made it so that the upper and lower parts of each limbs are not collide. This is so that it won't bug out and collide with each other when you put it together. Okay, now let's start off simple and focus on making the inverse kinematics for one leg. After that, we can copy and paste the logic for the other limbs. To make things look a bit more organized, we're gonna move the limbs we're not using yet to the side, and we're gonna separate the leg into three parts, like so. Now, we're gonna add our servos. Press Ctrl and T at the same time, or whatever key point you set, to reveal the servo's orientation. Make sure the yellow peg is sideways. We're gonna grab the bomb servo and put it onto the knee of the side segment of the leg. The bomb servo is always the one with the green notes when you open up the logic tool. After that, we put the other servo onto the knee of the shin segment of the leg. After that, we want to resize all the servos so that it's a perfect size for the joints. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the hips. Copy and paste the servos and put the bottom servo onto the hips of the body. Put the other servo onto the top part of the thighs. Do the same exact thing for the foot as well. Put the bottom servo onto the bottom part of the shin and then put the other servo onto the foot. Once you got all your servos, it should look like this. We're not done setting up the servos just yet, we'll have to configure it so it has the perfect settings for the template. What I would do here is I would get a maxed out large constant integer and connect it to the torque of the servos. But since this is a template, I want to make things look neater. What I did here was get a block and flatten it out and make it larger to resemble some sort of board. Next, I would add a text block which would tell me that this is the constant used for the torques of the servo. Okay, get the constant out and make sure you max it out. All you need to do really is just input a large number like this and it'll go to the largest number it can be. If you don't want to keep going back and forth to apply the constant number to the torque of the servos, hold your left shift key and grab the output. Go to the servos and click on the torque inputs one by one. After you're done, let go of shift and click outside of the logic nodes. Okay, now it's time to configure the servos. Click on all of the bottom servos, the one with the green nodes of course, and select your configuration tool. Change your acceleration to around 20 to 30, the speed should be the same thing, 20 to 30, and the angle should be 0. It's time to test this out. Get the anchor block and put it on the body of the template, then you can activate your build. If you did it correctly, the leg should be going straight down like this. If the leg is bending, make sure the angle of each servo is set to zero. And if the legs are still bending, they might be oriented the wrong way, so you might have to rotate your servos. After you tested out the servos, we want to measure the size and the shin of the leg. To do this, Get a block and resize it from the center of the servo to the center of the other servo. So as you can see, my thigh is 15 studs long. Do the same thing to the shin, and as you can see, right here, my shin is 18 studs long. Now that I've noted my limb's lengths, we're going to create our configuration for our cosine law formula. If you don't remember what cosine law is, or if you haven't learned about it yet, it's basically this formula. 
The law of cosines allows us to find angles or side length measurements for triangles other than right angled triangles. In our case, we will be using the law of cosines to help us find the angles of our hip servo and our knee servo when we want our leg to be posed in a specific way using a position sensor. We all replace the letters in the cosine law with our limbs. C will be our thigh, and A will be our shin. Capital A will be our hip servo angle, and capital B will be our knee servo angle. We won't be using capital C for anything, but you can imagine it as our foot servo angle. Now you might be wondering what will B be used for? B will be a vector magnitude block which gets the length and studs from where our hip is to where the position sensor is. Now you might be wondering where the position sensor will play in this diagram. The position sensor will be at the end of our leg. In our case, it's gonna be our foot. To give you a better picture, it is a big red dot on the diagram. So to finish off this explanation, having our vector magnitude block makes it so that our leg acts as a triangle, which is a requirement for the cosine law. This will help us find the angles for our servos. For organization purposes, I'm going to create another board for our leg. For here, I'm going to type out chin, and then the length of the limb and studs. After that, get a constant integer and set the number to the length you've measured. I'm going to do the same thing for my thigh. We're going to change the constant to 15. And now we get another constant, but this time we're going to label it as 2 because we will need the constant 2 for our formula. I'm going to go back to my frame and delete the blocks we use to measure our limbs. I'm going to grab a global 2 relative block and put it in the center of our hip servo located on the lower torso. Like I've explained before, what we're going to do to get our B side of our formula is to use a vector magnitude block with a position sensor to get that imaginary side we need for our legs. So here, I'm going to grab a vector magnitude block and put it on our newly created board. We'll rename this to VM, standing for vector magnitude. We'll need to connect the output from our global to relative to it, so I'm going to quickly grab it and connect it. Now we need a position sensor so that we can connect it to our global to relative block. And just for testing purposes, I'm just going to connect a vehicle seat to the position sensor so that I can test it out later. Back to our logic board, we'll need some mass blocks. So first we're going to get our three power blocks. I'm going to switch the VM and the constant 2's position so that the board looks a bit more organized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and grab our constant 2 and connect it to the second value input of our power blocks so that we can power all of our constants with 2. After that, we can connect all of our constants to the first value inputs like so. Now that's done, I'm just going to grab a text block and rename it to something like like configuration. So we're going to add another block and resize it, so it's like we're adding another layer to the board. This will be our hip servo formula. Now it's time to copy and do the operations from the formula and remake it in game. One thing to note when you're recreating a formula in game is to remember the order of operations. You guys might know it as bed math or PEMDIS. Either one works. I'm going to stay quiet for this part because if I describe what I'm doing, that would be a lot of yapping. So feel free to do the formula yourself or follow my lead. If you guys want, slow down the video if you have to.
Now that we're done this part, we want to clamp it so that the maximum number is 1 and the minimum number is negative 1. The reason why we're doing this is well because if you try to input something, for example, a value greater than 1 in an arc cosine, you might get undefined in your calculator or nan, which basically means not a number. If your value is nan, that would make your servo spin in a crazy way, so make sure you clamp it like so, and input the division output from the formula into the input of the clamp. Afterwards, we get our arc cosine block and connect our clamp's output to the arc cosine's input. Since the arc cosine will output in a unit called radians, we want to convert it to degrees using a radian to degree converter. After we do all of that, spawn in a turret handler block and grab that vector output from the global to relative part, then connect it to the turret handler block. We're gonna subtract the turret handler's yaw with our calculated angle from the formula. The reason why we subtract the turret handler's yaw with our calculated hip angle is to get that offset we need to get our leg into our desired position. The turret handler gets our offset angle by finding the angle from our hip to where the position sensor is. Okay, after we subtract our turret handler angle with the calculated angle, grab the output of the subtraction block and put it in the angle input of our hip servo. Now, activate it and see what happens. What I do to test if it's working is to make sure you're flying, then fly into the vehicle seat so that you're able to move the position sensor. Now, obviously, something's wrong here. If we move it sideways, it goes up. The leg is supposed to follow the position block. I've forgotten something here. The yaw of the turret handler block only uses the x and the z axis to calculate the angle, but not our y axis. So we'll have to do something to switch the axis around. To do this, we're gonna have to grab a number two vector block and a vector to number block. Now, we have two indicators for the global to relative block that tells us our axis. The pink line is on the horizontal plane, so it could either resemble our x-axis or the z-axis. However, since the teal line is on the vertical plane, this means that the teal line resembles our y-axis. If you don't know what axis to switch places with, it's time to do trial and error. Now this might take some time, so I'm just gonna skip ahead and tell you what worked out for me. Okay, it's finally tracking it correctly, however it's inversed. I'm lazy, so what I'm gonna do is add a negative input after the subtraction block and reconnect it to our servo. So great, now it's working now. For organization purposes, I'm gonna add a text block and rename it to something like forward hip servo. We're gonna extend the board a bit and now we're gonna just copy and paste the formula we created. Obviously, it's not gonna use the same values, so we're gonna change that. But first, for organization purposes, I'm gonna rename the text block to knee servo. We're gonna be using this formula. So I'm just gonna disconnect these nodes like so. Then we just connect the values we need back into the mass blocks. Okay, great. Now instead of subtracting it with the turn handler, we just subtract it with 180, then connect it to the knee servo. It's obviously not working as intended. I think we need to add a negative input here and just reconnect it back to the servo. Now it's working, but now it's bending in ways a leg shouldn't be able to. 
The fix is pretty simple. Select all of your servos in the leg, and in your rotate tool, select the local option. Then you have to rotate it 180 degrees. We also need to rotate our global to relative block too, so select it and rotate the block 180 degrees. Amazing! It's working now and it's bending accordingly. If we want the leg to move sideways as well, all we need is another set of servos. So what we do is copy and paste the hip servos, rotate them 90 degrees so it's oriented like this, then put the bottom servo on the hip, then compress the top servo with the forward hip bottom servo. After, just resize it accordingly, Disconnect the angle of the side hip servo and then grab the pitch node from the turret handler and connect it to our side hip servo. If we activate it, we can see that it spazzes out and the servo breaks. Now a simple fix is to add more mass to that floating joint that is compressed with the two servos. First, we need to make sure the servos are 10 density. Then we grab a head mesh make it 10 density, and make sure it's non-collide. Then we need to resize it so that it's a bigger size. As you can see, it works perfectly fine now. Now that we've completed the IK logic for one leg, it's time to do the rest. First, we're gonna do some organization. Let's add a text part and rename it to right leg, so we know that this logic board is for the right leg. Let's get some text blocks and label our logic as well. Some other things I like to do is color code my logic. I use a color green for the logic that serves as an output to the servos. Now it's time to do the other limbs. Now obviously, I'm not gonna start from scratch to do the IK for the other limbs. The easy way out is to highlight the leg and alongside the logic blocks and duplicate them like so. I'm gonna rename this to left leg and now I'm going to color code the global two relatives. I'm also going to color code the position sensors so I know which one is moving which leg. Now activate your build and see if it works. Now for the arms, we're going to do the same thing. Copy both legs, make sure you don't forget the position sensors, global to relatives, and the logic blocks. Remove the feet because arms don't have feet. And now for the arms, select the global option in the rotate tool, then rotate 180 degrees like so, so that it bends the correct way. Color code the global to relatives and the position sensors so it's easy to identify. And now, you're done the main limbs. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. One major drawback of this mech template is that the side angles are very limited. You'll have to be creative with your position sensor to get those specific angles. 
I mean, unless you find a way to remove those limits. But I find this plenty enough to make fighting mechs. Now before I move on, my OCD is killing me, so I'm just gonna organize my template by making sure the arms and the legs are equal lengths apart from the body. I'm also gonna rename the text blocks so that they are correct. For the next step, I'm gonna add some waist and torso movement. If I don't do this, the mech will look a little bit stiff, so by adding some more movements with the waist and torso, I can make the animations look a bit more fluid. I'm going to split the torso up into three parts. The upper torso, the waist, and the lower torso. Make sure to make your waist non-collide so that some parts won't glitch out and collide with each other. I'm gonna add a set of servos for the waist. Make sure it's oriented like this. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the upper torso, but instead have the servos oriented like this. Make sure the configuration for the servos are the same as the other limbs. Acceleration should be 30, density should be 10, angle should be 0, and the speed should be 30. We'll grab a global to relative block and put it in the middle of the waist servo. And like usual, we're gonna duplicate one of those position sensors for the waist. Oh, and I think here I forgot to rename some servos for the arms. Anyways, we're gonna copy a board and rename it to torso or something. It's not gonna be too complicated like our arms and legs. All we really need is just a turret handler block. Grab another text and name this to waste. And to save them space, we're gonna make the board a little bit smaller like so. Okay, now we just get our output from the global to relative. Grab the yaw of the turret handler and put it on the waste servo. Okay, as you can see here, the waist is inverted. I could add a negative at the end of the turret handler, but if for some reason you want to save one block, we're going to do something different. We're going to grab the waist servos, both of them, select our rotate tool, make sure you click local, and for here, since it's aligned perfectly, I don't really have to, just flip it 180 degrees like so. Now for the upper torso servo, we're basically going to be doing the same thing. Get a turret handler, insert a global to relative block in the middle of the servo, copy the position sensor, and basically connect them the same way we did for our waste servo. This time, instead of grabbing our yaw output, we're gonna be using our pitch, because it uses the y-axis. As you can see, it's also inverted, so we're gonna be doing the same thing to our servos by flipping them 180 degrees, and now it's completed. If you notice, the torso might bend a little bit too much, so if you want to, you can add a clamp that makes it so that it can only bend from negative 45 degrees to 45 degrees only. But I'm not gonna do that because I'm lazy. We're basically finished here. But to get ready for the next part of the tutorial, I'm gonna be adding some sort of mode that makes it so that you can switch from the functional mode to a position grabber mode. So to do this, we're going to be grabbing some switch boxes for each part of the limb. I'm going to be grabbing 4 vector switch boxes and 2 numerical switch boxes. 
We're not using a vector switch box for the torso parts because that'll just make things a little bit more complicated when we get to use lists in the future. So make sure you label them so it's not confusing. I'm gonna label them like this. Now for the torso logic board, I'm gonna modify it a bit by adding a addition block. The reason why I'm adding addition blocks is so that it's easy to modify the logic instead of disconnecting and reconnecting the angles of the servo every time you want to change something. With the addition blocks, they permanently stay connected to the servo so you can easily modify the logic board. Make it green to symbolize that it's connected to the servos. Now what we're going to do is connect our pitch of our upper torso to the on value of our switch box. Same thing with our waist turret handler. Connect the yaw to the on value of the switch box. After you do that, you want to connect our switch boxes to the corresponding addition blocks. We're going to replace the angle inputs with the addition blocks, so replace them accordingly like so. Now you're probably wondering what do we do for the vector switch boxes, and it's pretty simple. First, we're going to get rid of all the input vector nodes that are in our vector to number blocks, which are the blocks that are colored in blue. Then, we connect the vector switch boxes to their corresponding vector to number blocks. Now, what we're going to do is connect our global to relative vector outputs to their corresponding vector switch boxes. We need to connect all of them to the on values for each switch box, so connect them like how I'm doing it right now. This is optional, but if you want to make your logic look more organized and easy to navigate, I suggest coloring your vector switch boxes to the same color as their global to relative blocks. Okay, now that's done, get a button and connect its output to all the switch boxes. This makes it so that whenever you press a button, it will switch on to the position grabber mode. If you activate your creation, you will notice that the mech template will go into a similar position like this. Now, whenever we press a button, it will switch to the position grabber mode, and now it works like so. Now, I'm just gonna grab a text block and rename this. Now and then, feel free to add comments with a text block to make your logic easier to understand. For example right now, I'm going to put a text block beside the button to remind myself that this button makes it so that I can make the template go into the position grabber mode. We're almost done. Now what I'm going to do is grab three number display blocks and use them to display the relative coordinates of the position block. This is what we're going to use to find the coordinates so that we can record them on some sort of notepad or paper and then put them in our list in the future. So I'm going to duplicate this so I have four of these, then rename them to our limbs so I know which limb I'm recording the position for. Then I'm going to make one more for the torso, but instead of the three numbers, we're going to use two only. These two number displays will display the angles for our waist and our torso. So now that we got the number displays down, get four vector to number blocks. Then we're gonna connect the vector switch boxes to their corresponding vector to number blocks, like so. We're gonna put some text blocks to indicate which axis is which, just so we won't get confused. After that, we just connect the values to the labeled number displays like so. Now for the torso part, all we need to do is just connect the switch boxes to the number displays like so. And of course, since they're not an axis, we're just gonna rename this to remind ourselves that the number we get in these display blocks are measured in degrees. One more thing before we end the video, we're gonna put some anchor blocks to anchor the position blocks so we can pose our mechs to our desired poses. 
So get 6 buttons and put them under the coordinate displays like so. Make sure to color code them so you won't get confused. Then we get the anger blocks and put them on each of our position blocks. Then disconnect the buttons to the anger blocks. Let's test this out real quick. So after we press the button, we can see that it's correctly displaying the coordinates and the angles. Now let's grab this position block, and if we want it to stay in this certain position, just press the button like so, and the position block will stay still. Okay, now as you can see, we successfully made it pose, and the coordinates should have changed whenever you move the position blocks. Before I end the video, I want to give you guys a few optional things you guys can do to make your mech template look even better. For example, if you want head movement, it's basically the same thing we did for our torso. Add a swivel servo to the neck, and add a servo to the head to make it look up and down. Feel free to add more comments in the logic to make your logic look even more organized. That's basically it for now. The next video is about adding the walking or running mechanisms for the template. Delaforest signing out, yay!